Welcome to the well. If you would stand to your feet. Everybody that's out in the lobby, if you want to make your way into the sanctuary, let's take, uh, we're going to get started in about two minutes. Let's take about two minutes to greet somebody that you have not met before. Excited to have you with us today. Stand to your feet. We're going to get ready to worship this morning. Man, I've got some high expectations for today. Yeah. I have been blown away these last couple of weeks just by the holiness of the presence of God in this place. Super honored and grateful that he would find it fit to come and visit us in the way that he has been. That he's making a habitation and a home in this place with each and every one of us. So I'm excited. I am ready to worship. You guys ready to worship this yeah. morning? Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for everything that you've been doing in this place these last couple of weeks. And we are expecting, God. We are hungry. We are hungry for more of you, Lord. We thank you, God, for everything that you have been doing. And we ask that it would increase this morning in Jesus' name. Beyond anything we have experienced before, God, increase your presence in this room. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen.
day was silent Surely it was through Since when has it possible To ever stop time? Come on! Friday's disappointment This Sunday's empty too yeah. Since when has it possible To ever stop
Jesus, we are hungry for you. We are desperate to see you glorified across this earth. That your name would become known. That every nation, tribe, and tongue would confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We desire a fresh move of your spirit. Pour your spirit out, God. Revive hearts that have grown dim. Burn a fire once again in your church, God. Burn a fire deep throughout every denomination, God. Burn a fire. Burn a fire, God. We're desperate for you, Jesus desperate to see you get your full reward, God. In the name of Jesus. 
offering and have a table. Just can have a seat or stay. Thank you, worship team. As always, that was awesome. Kurt's 
the testimony is Kurt said, God, this isn't mine. This doesn't belong in my body. He didn't, I mean, that's prayer, I guess, if you're talking to God. He didn't command it to leave. He didn't declare healing. He didn't lay hands on himself. He just said, this isn't for me. It doesn't belong in me. And he said he physically felt a hand go into his back. That's a weird feeling. I said, was it painful? He goes, no, it was pressure, but it wasn't painful. A hand went into his back, grabbed the kidney stone, pulled it out, and the pain has been gone ever since. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That is the right reaction, Hadley. Good job. Are there any, does anybody have kidney stones right now? Thank you, Jesus. No? You got to not move your arms when I ask questions like that, otherwise I don't know. All right, well, praise God. We don't have kidney stones. It's a kidney stone-free environment. <laughs> Glory be to God. All right, we're going to do our offering. If you guys want to stand up, we're going to do declarations because they're real and they change the world. If you would like to sow into today's offering, our ushers are going to pass baskets. There's a text to give option that will come up after we do the uh, declarations. If you're online, there's a, a text to give thing you can click on. And uh, so let's do these. You guys ready? Yeah. You guys believe that these actually change the world? Or? Yeah. Awesome. All right. As we receive today's offering, we're believing you for heaven opened, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked, dreams and visions, angelic visitations, declarations, impartations, and divine manifestations anointings, giftings, and calls, positions and promotions, provisions and resources to go to the nations, souls and more souls from every generation, saved and set free, carrying kingdom revelation. Thank you, Father, that as we join our value system to yours, you will shower favor, blessings, and increase upon us, so we have more than enough to co-labor with heaven and see Jesus get his full reward. Hallelujah. As a release to give. If you are in 6th to 12th grade, we would love for you to come join us. Come grow in your relationship with the Lord and in friendships here at the well. If you have any questions, please see Josh or Becca Howard. If you wish to become a member of the well, our next membership class is today, directly following the service. Please go to the bridge and sign up. Lunch will be provided. The next Cultivate training session is coming up very soon. Led by Lori Crossman this upcoming Saturday, September 24th. Sign up today to secure your spot for this dynamic training. You will learn how to overcome barriers that block you from hearing the voice of God. It will be a powerful time break. Registration is $15 per individual and $25 per couple. Registration is on our website at thewellgr.com or on our app. Next Sunday, there will be a family meeting directly following the service. If you are a member of the well or call this body your home, please plan to stay for this brief meeting. Jail ministry through Reach the Forgotten officially starts Sunday, October 9th. We are looking for volunteers to reach the inmates with the gospel at the Kent County Jail. The Well Church has committed to one Sunday afternoon a month to lead two 45-minute church services. How can you be a part? Can you sing and or play an instrument? Can you share the gospel? Then you're a great candidate. Please see Jason Wimbush for more information. 
Mark your calendar. Dr. Leon Van Ruin is joining us for an incredible time of ministry and teaching on Saturday, October 22nd at 6.30 and Sunday, October 23rd during our normal Sunday service. Come and be refreshed and challenged in your walk with the Lord. We will be having a trunk or treat event in our parking lot on Friday, October 28th from 6 to 8 p.m. The deadline to sign up to host a trunk is next Sunday, September 25th, to ensure that we have enough cars to host this event. If we do not have enough cars by September 25th signed up, the event will be canceled. So please, please, email Heidi Skeens at HeidiPinskeens at thewellgr.com to sign up. Now, please welcome with me Pastor Hat. are hilarious. So next time, Mac, you do announcements, I want to see your moves because we know that you have some moves. So I've seen him dance and it's hilarious. He can do like this robot type thing. And I'm like, okay, I don't sure what that is, but looks cool. I can't do it. All right. Today is a new day. Today I will be transformed by the power of God, by the presence of God, and by the word of God to never be the same in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> wow, thank God for his presence. I don't know how anyone exists without it. It's life. It is life. His presence is like that Ruah breath of God that was just blown into Adam where the first life began because of the breath of the Holy Spirit. We're created for him. We're created to worship him. We're created to commune with him. We're created to, 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 to have relationship with him. It's all about Jesus Christ. So, so, so good. So I'm gonna tell you a little story. I've been having a lot of stories lately. <laughs> I went to, uh, well, they say New Orleans. So I went to New Orleans. Oh, oh, sorry, Nolens. And wow, was it hot. And the humidity was like stepping out of the plane into the airport, out of the airport into a sauna. It was really hot. Um, I had never been there before, and uh, it was very interesting, to say the least. Um, I had picture, I had a different picture in my mind for some reason. So I knew we were going to do a swamp ride. So I was grateful for the fact that I did bring some casual clothing. But for the most part, my, most of my wardrobe is not casual, as you probably have guessed. I know you only see me on Sundays, most of you. Some of you see me outside of that. But most of my wardrobe is not very casual. So I did bring some casual things. Thank God for that. Um, but I was picturing leaving... Um, the hotel during the day because there was other people that were having meetings I had gone with and um, I would be doing my zoom calls and my meetings and finishing up my workbook my homework um, for my coaching uh, degree and there was no way I was going to be able to go out on my own and let me tell you the story so the night before I had walked to Walgreens because I was needing something so went to Walgreens. I didn't walk by myself. I was with others. And I remembered the way that we had gone. But then the next morning, um, they're all going into meetings. And I know that I have some time. So I'm thinking, well, I'll, I, did, I don't remember what it looked like at night. So I'll go, you know, for you. And I'll get you what you need. So I get out and the concierge says, oh, so where are you going? And I said, oh, I'm just heading to Walgreens. And I'm already starting to sweat because it's so hot out. 
And um, he goes, oh, he said, well, let me tell you how to get there. I said, I'm pretty sure I remember. And he goes, oh, no, no, no. He goes, you want to go this way. So he gives me different directions. Well, the directions he gives me, I'm going to now have to cross over four lanes twice. And people are urinating around me. They are getting high. They're drunk. They are doing cat calls all kinds of things, and I'm starting to like get very nervous because now I'm getting lost. I cannot find Walgreens. Finally, find Walgreens, get in there, want to get out as fast as possible. There is rubbish everywhere. It is like not a safe place for a woman to be walking alone. And now I have my, you know, my fancy purse. I got my purse over my arm. I'm thinking, probably not a good idea. So I hold it like a baby and I'm walking around like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing here. And I'm getting, <laughs> it looked pathetic. And there's men are saying stuff and you're getting offered stuff. And I mean, if you want to get high, go to New Orleans. Um, it, it's, it's awful. It's disgusting. I'm sorry. It really was. And so then I'm lost. I don't remember. I didn't want to go back the way that I came because that was horrible. So I decided I'm going to go a different route because I thought it was the same Walgreens. We went the night before, found out it wasn't. So I'm going, okay. So I asked this kind gentleman that was on this corner. I said, could you tell me how to get to this hotel? And he goes, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just turn right, turn right, go down two blocks. And then you're going to hang another right. And I said, and he goes, just keep going. You're going to find it. And I said, okay, great. So I did that. That was not the way to the hotel. And I'm getting with each turn, it's getting worse, not better. I mean, you could have one road that's, eh, it's okay. This one's like, no, people are falling off their bikes, yelling at each other. One guy's just yelling by himself, to himself. And the other, another one is just lying on the ground and he's, but I'm like, okay, no, what's gonna happen there? And so I'm just like, oh God, oh God, oh God. And so then I can hear somebody walking behind me and I'm like clenching my purse for everything. I'm like, I wish I had something sharp. I wish I had something sharp. And I'm like praying, oh Jesus, help me. Oh Jesus, help me. And so I'm kind of going like this. I'm like, yep, there's somebody behind me. And so I go into this AT and T store. It was the cleanest store there. Trust me, there's no boutiques. And I thought I was going to be going to boutiques, that happening. And so I'm like, okay, so I get in there and say, hey, could you tell me how to get to? And they're like, what, where's that? And I'm like, oh God, they don't even know. So he gets out his phone. He starts looking up and he goes, oh yeah. So you're going to go down the street about two blocks. You're going to go right. And they're going to take another right. I'm like, I have gone right more times. And I'm just, I got to be at some point going to come back full circle. Right. And so I'm like looking up at the signs and I'm so confused and I'm so confused. And I had been calling someone. They're not answering. I've been texting. They're not answering. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to keep walking. And eventually I wound back to the hotel. I'm stressed. And that's New Orleans. Now there are a few spots that are nice. You just have to know where they're at and you have to take an Uber. You cannot walk. It is like being in a third world country. They need prayer. I'm serious. The buildings are dilapidated. Half of them are like people, homeless people are in them, they're boarded up. And it's not because of the hurricane, because the French Quarter and that downtown area actually wasn't touched by much water. So that's what I was confused about. I thought, oh, this is a result of all the flooding. It's not. It's just a, a result of depravity. And there aren't many people, from what I've heard from other people that I spoke to, where the Christians are actually hitting the streets and going out and evangelizing them. It is highly perverted. It is it's awful. Um, there's um, a one street, that, Bourbon Street, I think is what it's called. Don't want to go down that street. Um, and so, but there has to be men. If, if I felt led, I'm, honestly, I've, I've, I'm pretty bold. I've gone down on division. I've, I've been to Africa. I've been to Ghana. I've been to places that had high level of witchcraft. I'm not, I'm not timid. I, I, if, I, if God calls me to do something, I trust that he's going to be there and I'll do whatever it is he's called me to do. But I felt zero grace to be on those streets. I didn't feel, I, I thought it'd be a lack of wisdom for me to approach anyone and to try to, you know, minister to them. I just didn't have the grace for it. So I just headed on back to the hotel and that was pretty much where I was at all day during the days. At night, there were some nice places that I was able to go to. And for those of you who follow me on Facebook, you got to see some beautiful pictures, but sometimes pictures aren't always worth a thousand words. You see a snapshot and everyone's like, oh my gosh, you look so happy. And I'm like, I was freaking miserable. <laughs> 
can't believe how happy you looked. And like, okay, well, whatever. I'm glad you thought so. So don't get so envious when you're looking at people's pictures. You just don't always know. But one thing I learned, um, and one powerful testimony, and then we'll get into what I want to talk about, this leads into it, is that from the time I was at um, the airport in Grand Rapids to the time that I left, I don't know, something happened to me when I was up here that I hadn't experienced in a really, really long time. But um, there was an impartation for souls. And the realization that we are in the last days, and I don't care how often you've heard it, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. Live your life like we're in the last days. I'm not saying blow every penny you have and head out in the street. I'm just saying be aware that Jesus could come at any moment. We all think that we know he's not gonna come during our lifetime or whatever. Well, neither did the five foolish virgins. You don't know when, I don't know when. We don't know the time of the season. People try to figure it out. The word says we won't know, so you can try to figure it all you want. You're not gonna know. The word is the word. So I'm at the top floor of this hotel, and this actually was quite beautiful. It had almost a 360 view of this um, city. It's much prettier at night because you can't see anything but lights and, um, and the skyline. But there was a woman sitting at a bar and my eyes were drawn to her and she had left and then come back and then she was finishing her drink and paying for it. And I was like, I think I have a word for her. And so I'm like looking around and I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm just gonna go for it. I look, she's gone. I'm like, shoot, shoot, shoot. So I'm like, I go to the elevator and there she is. I'm like, oh, praise the Lord. I said, hey, I said, I don't know if this is gonna make any sense to you or not. I said, but have you recently lost a job? And she goes, yeah, why? And I said, well, I just want you to know that um, God's gonna open up a door that you're gonna be so surprised by. I said, your latter state is gonna be so much greater than your former. I said, he's getting ready to restore some things that have been stolen from you. And she said, I'm going through a divorce. And she began to cry. And I thought, just taking that one moment, she hugged me, I didn't know who this woman was. And I embraced her as though I had known her my whole life. Because she got to experience and encounter the love of God. And I kept thinking to myself, I was be being filled all week. Otherwise, you go from one service of getting a touch, waiting till the next service to get another touch. And then if that service isn't one of those services, come on, you all know what I'm talking about. There, it's not every service where God comes and invades in, in, these, in certain ways where you're like, your life you know is forever changed and transformed, that something happened, something happened to me, something happened to many of you. That's not something that, that's something that we have to steward. It's like all of a sudden, like we have this encounter with God and I'm like, oh God, I don't wanna lose this, I don't wanna lose this. And I remember saying that, I just said it this week, I'm like, I don't wanna lose this feeling. I know things are gonna happen, I know I'm, I'm gonna be disappointed, I know somebody's going to hurt me. I know this is going to happen. I said, I don't want to lose this feeling. And I was getting kind of nervous and paranoid. And he said, just keep the, Sorry. keep the fire burning. He said, it's up to you to tend the flame. So I'm going to reread Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. And the bridegroom was delayed, so they all became drowsy and they slept. Even the wise virgins slept. But at midnight there was a cry, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose, trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for the lamps are going out. But the wise answered saying, since there will not be enough for us, um, for us and you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. 
But he answered and said, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you neither know the day nor the hour. So, and I was rereading this, and I kept thinking about, so that word trimmed, it doesn't mean to like clip at the wick. It literally means, it's cosmetic. It means to adorn. So they all got up, they took their lamps, and they adorned them. They made these, these big, um, like it would have been like a, a, a big um, like shaft, whatever you want to call it, um, and they took the time to adorn them. Even the five foolish had the time to adorn it. Looked great. But there was no oil. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. I can throw up my arms and sing. I can jump. I can worship my heart out. But if I'm not tending my flame and keeping the oil in my lamp, that oil represents the person of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit lives within us, but he wants to feed upon the word. Us, wants us to feed upon the word. He, there's something that transforms us. Even, look, there's, oh, there is a touch from God that will forever change you. But the word of God will always stand and live forever. And the oil, I can have enough oil so that I can give to someone else. The five wise virgins did not share their oil. That's not the, the point of this story. The point of this story is the fact that they had so much that they could have shared it, but they also didn't know how long the bridegroom was gonna be out. Even though they already heard that he's coming, they don't know how long it's gonna take for him to actually get there. We know he's coming, but we don't actually know how long it's going to take for him to get here. But there's something so miraculous about be being filled. Turn with me to Galatians. Chapter 5. Last week we were talking about the importance of having saving faith that we can have faith in people, we can have faith in coming to church on Sunday, we can have faith in religion, we can have faith in what our fathers and our mothers believed and taught us, but there's only, a, only saving faith is actually having a relationship with Jesus Christ, stewarding it throughout the day, that when you fall short, which you will, come on, I fell short, and I, this week I said, oh, I renew myself to you once again, Father. Today, I went over, I took communion, and I, I had something, I got hurt this weekend, and it was, it, was, it was hard, and I was like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. At some point, I'm like, seriously, hello? Like, I'm like, okay, well, Kathy, you can feel sorry for yourself for a moment, but you can't live there. And I'm like, I'm not going to live here. And so I took that communion, and I said, God, once again, I've done this many times. It doesn't matter how many times you do it. Do it over and over and over and over again. I give my life to you. I surrender it to you. Your will be done, God, not mine. I know what my will is, and it must not line up with what your will is. So I choose your will over mine. And so, Father, I commit myself to you again. And your presence is what I need more than anything else. And you have to do that over and over again. What am I doing? I'm saying to Kathy, I'm saying to my spirit man, get up, get up, get up, get up. Sacrifice of praise. Go ahead and do it. Get up. You cannot have time to be wallowing around because there's always going to be something that's going to disappoint you. You are, oh, hell yeah. There's trials and tribulations that you will experience in this world. But when we understand, be of good cheer, be of good cheer because we have, he's overcome the world. This is not our destination just so you know that we are sojourners here. This is not where we get to land. This isn't our landing. Do you understand? This is our takeoff point. 
Galatians 5.13, I could not do this. You, you have no idea. I could not stand up here and do this if it weren't for the grace and the presence of God in my life. For you are called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love, serve one another. You see, for so long, we've been, we hear over and over again, and it's true, we are not saved by works. We are saved by grace, not of works, lest any man should boast. But then it goes on to say, but you are created for good works. I believe, I'm gonna step out, and this is what I believe. I believe that this next move of God, the first marking of it will not be signs, wonders, and miracles. The first marking is gonna be a church that returns to its first love. There will be a radical love for Jesus and a radical love for one another that we will see the generosity that we read in the book of Acts and we do not see here right now, where we are really willing to sacrifice our own pleasure to make sure that somebody else is comfortable, that we're willing to go out of our way because of the love of Christ is so burning within us. That is what I believe this great awakening will be marked by, that we will be finally being able to eat the food, the solid food of the word, and that we won't just constantly need to be fed by a bottle full of milk because we're constantly offended and we have our swords going against each other. No, instead what's gonna happen is we're gonna have arms going next to each other and there's gonna be a surrounding of love like that which we've never experienced before a radical love for Jesus. And I'll tell you what, when you love Jesus, you can't help but to love people. All of a sudden, the ones that you can't stand, just being honest, come on, there's some people you want coffee with, other people you don't. All of a sudden, you'll have a love. Because it won't be yours, it'll be his. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk in the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. Come on, how many of you ever been there? Like you know you should go right, but instead you go left. You know you should go forward, but instead you go back. You know you shouldn't do this, but you do. Why is that? There's an opposing that's taking place. Your flesh is winning over your spirit if you're choosing to do what your flesh is desiring to do. Are you listening to me? There's something that takes place in Acts, I think it's chapter 13, it talks about how the, um, the uh, apostles were be, being filled with the joy and with Holy Spirit. Being baptized in the Holy Spirit is not a one-time experience because we leak. So we need to be constantly be being filled. When you live in an area, in, in, in the world, period, I don't care where you're at in the world, some, it's, it's interesting though, there's, it's almost like there's a different stronghold over different areas. Does that make sense? Like this is a very religious stronghold that's over this area. You go to New Orleans and it's depravity, it's, it's, it's perversion, it's, it's, it's awful. And, it's, and it makes you feel like you, you can't shower enough. And then there's other areas like in um, Accra in um, West Africa where it's, it's witchcraft and you can feel it. You, it tries to 
come against you at, at night and in your dreams. And, 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 and it's just, there's different strongholds over different places. And so you have to know what that is, but you have to be being filled so that when that judgment starts to come, because that's what religion does. Listen to me. Religion is judgment. Religion looks like judging. God looks like loving. And so when you're under an environment where there's such a stronghold of religion, you can find yourself judging other people. And when you see yourself judging other people, you can know that you're actually coming underneath that type of a stronghold. You can judge people by their dress, you can judge them by their car, you can judge them by their status, by their success, their career, how they're treating their children, whatever it may be. There's all types of judgment that we can do. And just know you wanna break that because the one thing that a sinner knows that they're doing is they know that they're sinning and they don't need to have you tell them, they need to have you love them. And that is true for Christians. Christians are falling short and they're full of shame. And because they're so full of shame, I believe it's one of the reasons why there's empty seats. Because we're gonna judge them for the fact that they haven't been here in a while. So then why come? When we should be loving them, caring for them, showing concern. Does that make sense? If someone is falling short in their life, it's not for you to point it out or me to point it out. Love covers a multitude of sin. Verse 18, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, revelries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. Now, some of these are pretty obvious, and we would be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna never be a part of an orgy, or, uh, you know, hello. I'm not gonna be doing any sorcery. How about idolatry? What are you worshiping? What about strife and jealousy? Do you ever look at a, Ladies, a woman who's like five foot eight, thin, with long, beautiful blue, or with blue eyes and long hair. And you're like, <laughs> stuck in my stomach a little bit. <laughs> Come on, be honest. I'm talking about real life situations where we use jealousy to actually judge someone and push someone away instead of actually embracing them. So I don't have any idols in my life. Ask God to show you where your idols are. I have, and it's not pleasant. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against such there is no law. Why? Because you're operating out of the goodness. It says that all things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. And God is purifying his church. That's what a great awakening looks like. It looks like coming back to our first love and saying, God, take away the things that aren't adding to me and replace it with things, God, that bring you honor and glory. I think it was Matthew that said that, that Jesus would get his full reward. That's my greatest desire, is that he would get his full reward. How many of you want to see Jesus get his full reward? Verse 24, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. The important part of this is understanding when we look at the, uh, the 10 wise virgins. I see them tending the flame. I see them filling themselves up. The oil represents the anointing, the presence of God, the Holy Spirit in their life. You can look at it throughout Acts. There's, um, let me grab it. Acts, I think it's 13.
Yes, and the disciples, it's, it's for 13 verse 52, and the disciples were continually, say continually, continually filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. At the same time, it literally is simultaneously. T t Greek scholars noted that above anything that they say that being filled means to have something happen continuously. And so there has to be an awareness of what that is. It ha there has to be a, um, a, a stewardship that takes place over our lives where we say, okay, Holy Spirit, come and fill me today. Come and fill me today. I need wisdom that I cannot, I cannot get from my experiences in life. I need wisdom, God, to make decisions that I'm going to have to make this day, and I can't make them without you. And just taking time to steward the person and the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Rachel, can you come up on the keys, please? Oh my gosh, that would be hilarious, but that's okay. So I've had two weeks in a row where I could have died. Don't know what this week will bring. Maybe I die. That's it. Then there's that. I guess I better start making videos for my grandchildren. I'm just kidding. <clears throat> Do you want to know how I know I'm not going to die? because I haven't fulfilled the call of God in my life. That's how you know. The devil can kind of try to come to steal, kill, and destroy, but I know someone who says, I've come to bring you life and to bring it to you more abundantly. How many of you want a fresh and filling of the Holy Spirit this morning? Stand to your feet. Thank you, Holy Spirit. something that um, you received during the offering when we put our hands on each other. And Max said, just pray for more. Be bold. Be bold. But I'm going to ask you, pray for yourself right now. Put your hand over your heart. Holy Spirit, come afresh and anew. We want to be like those five wise virgins who have more than enough oil. Because we know you're coming back, we just don't know the day nor the hour. Help us to tend that what you are doing in our life. So when hardships, disappointments come, that we ride upon the wave instead of the wave overtaking us. So Holy Spirit, wash over every soul in this place, every soul that is watching online. Overtake them with your presence. May we fall more in love with you today than we were yesterday. Holy Spirit, come in a deeper way right now. you, Jesus. Wash over.
such a sense of um, I'm not sure what word to use I think it's confidence or maybe trust the Lord which I was reminded of Matthew 11 or Matthew 12 verse 20 it says a bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out and I feel like the Lord just wants us to know that it doesn't you know these messages these last few weeks have been such an encouragement and exhortation and a faith being released to, you know, to light the fire again. And I, I really believe if Jesus walked in the room, he would look at you with such grace and acceptance in his eyes. It doesn't matter if you feel like a broken reed or a smoldering wick. He won't put you out. He won't break you. He's here to restore us. He always comes with hope in his heart. He sees his beautiful, glorious church. He actually sees us as if we're already where he is taking us. It's the beauty of God. So we want to kind of leave this place available for people who just want to meet with the Lord. We'll put music on. Um, but I'm so glad you're here. I'm so thankful for what the Lord is doing. And just go this week and remember, he, he is here to restore everything. Take that into your bedrooms, your kitchens, your car while you're driving. Let him keep touching every area of your life. Amen. Um, if this is your first time with us, there's the bridge back here if you want to kind of give us information so we can get to know you, keep in touch. God bless you guys. Have a great week.